Tonight, has the elusive Bitcoin founder been outed? Facebook's new look is a lot like the old look. More good news for cord cutters, and Spotify makes some new moves. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 38, for Thursday, March 6th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to this evening's top story. Joining me now to talk more about it is Devendra Hardwar, senior editor over at VentureBeat. Hello, Devendra. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So you and pretty much everybody in technology wrote <laughs> your own versions. <laughs> story of the day. Yeah. Of the story of the day, which is mm -hmm. the Newsweek outing of Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto. I guess my first question to you is, do you think he's really the guy? I think, um, first of all, I don't think Newsweek would have really run this report if they didn't have a vague certainty that he's the guy. But uh, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, some of the other statements they got from his family, uh, some of the statements from one of his coworkers at Bitcoin, and even the initial statement he gave the Newsweek reporter, which is basically, yeah, I did it, but I'm not involved anymore. Um, it was a very implicit uh, admission that he was involved, although now he's denying it. So I'm pretty certain it's this guy, although I do think the story could be a little more complicated. There are probably other people involved. Now, Newsweek's Leah McGrath Goodman, who is the lead mm -hmm. uh, reporter on this story and really went to great lengths to find him, has sort of had to defend her tactics. She says most of, uh, if not all, of his information was 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 public knowledge. You can look up his house on on Google. He's he's mm -hmm. actually using his real name. But she got a lot of backlash from the Reddit community and others on the internet saying this was a gross uh, uh, invasion of privacy. What's your take? Um, you know, I, I tend to just roll my eyes whenever the Reddit community gets you know, roiled up over something. Um, but it's it's kind of funny how you know when actual investigative reporting happens on the internet. Um, it's so rare these days. Uh, I feel like a lot of people don't know how to understand it. Um, I do think, you know, there may have been some errors. Um, some of the pictures could uh, showed his house number. They showed the license plate of his car. And I think having that sort of specific information right there in the report uh, made it much easier for people to find him. Um, but yeah, if the information is out there in the public domain anyway, you know, people could have just found it pretty easily too. I think the the big mistake they made was putting that personal information out there in those photos. You know, one of the arguments is that the <clears throat> fact that he is the founder of Bitcoin means that he's in possession of many, many Bitcoins and a multimillionaire or a possible one, at least on paper because of it, is mm -hmm. outing him as a multimillionaire putting him in danger? I don't... I don't quite see the logic in that either because let's assuming he has like you know his his bitcoins stored in a usb stick in his living room or something that's ridiculous um if he first of all we don't know how much he actually has um and whatever it is i'm sure it is safely stored away or somewhere secure um you know in a security box or something so i yeah i think that's a little that's a baseless accusation really um but the fact that he is probably worth a little something, I don't know. I could see some sort of movie plot happening here where some people will want to kidnap him and give me your Bitcoins, <laughs> um, but uh, not in the real world. Do you think, besides the threat of kidnapping, why, mm -hmm. what's such a, why is it such a big deal that he doesn't want to be associated with Bitcoin and has gone to such great lengths not to and to live a relatively simple, quiet life? I, I think the... The, the story itself is just interesting, too, because I love the line. Um, the story mentions that he drives a Toyota Corolla. And, uh, yeah, that's a that's such an everyday car. And when I wrote it, I was like, yeah, he owns a Corolla. That's that's how he rolls. Um, I think it's interesting because we expect, you know, the tech elite to be living these, I don't know, big pimpin' lives or something. And when something like this happens, when the Flappy Bird guy gives up his fortune, you know, right. to have a simpler life, people freak out. We don't know how to process that. So I think it's really interesting. It's a very different situation this time, but it's really interesting to see how people don't quite know how to process people who don't act the way they think they should when they're famous or rich. 
Satoshi Nakamoto, apparently, uh, there was a great play-by-play -play, uh, in the LA Times how he was chased by reporters. Uh, people were calling it a oh, low-speed car chase. This is, of course, in the Los Angeles area. There was a sushi restaurant involved. A lot of a lot of breathless reporting about this. It all starts to get kind of ugly. Do you think he'll make a statement and, and quiet these people who would be beating down his door otherwise? <laughs> I think he'll have to make some sort of statement, but I don't know if people will ever leave him alone. This is something that's probably going to last for a while. Uh, but it is crazy, all this reports about uh, Pete, him being chased throughout L.A. It reads, it sounds more like a movie, right? It doesn't sound like real life. Um, I'm sure he's going to do something to eventually quiet the storm, but he may actually have to give up more information than he initially wanted to for that to happen. Well, thank you, Devendra, so much for talking with us a little bit about the very odd story <laughs> of, you know, Bitcoin. It just keeps getting weirder. Uh, at, weirder and weirder. Yeah, didn't think I was going <laughs> to talk about this when I woke up today. But uh, but thanks so much for talking with us. Tell folks no how they can find more of what you do online and beyond. Oh, uh, yeah. You can find me writing about tech every day at VentureBeat.com. And I'm on Twitter at Twitter.com slash Devendra. I'm sure I'll be back when they turn this into a movie. It'll Absolutely. Yes. And yeah. uh, the next time Bitcoin uh, has another weird uh, twist, uh, we'll make sure to have you back. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Lynda.com. With Lynda.com's easy-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace on your own terms from industry experts. With a subscription, as a member, you get limited access, unlimited access to thousands of online video courses covering a huge range of technical skills, creative techniques, business strategies. If you want to learn how to program or, or become a great photographer or learn a new software, at lynda.com you find top quality videos on a lot of different subjects, hundreds in fact. You can watch from your computer, your tablet, your mobile device. The instructors are all professionals. They're experts. They're passionate about teaching you what they know. And each course is structured so you can just watch from start to finish and learn that way or jump in to find a quick answer. It's $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library, or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. You can try lynda.com right now for a free seven day trial. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 and access the entire library. That's over 2000 courses for free for seven days. L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. Now, let's get straight to the tech feed. Almost exactly a year ago, Facebook rolled out a brand new design to a small number of its billion users. And in true user fashion, enough of them revolted and Facebook scrapped the whole thing until today. The new new design for the news feed, which is already live for some users and rolling out globally over the next few weeks, looks a lot like Facebook's mobile news feed. New icons, bigger photos, new fonts, and story cards. Gone is the drop-down menu of feeds. They're back in the left-hand sidebar. English-speaking Facebook users will see a larger graph search bar. Non-English-speaking Facebook users will see ordinary search results like people, places, and pages. Graph search is still not available in other languages besides English or on mobile devices for now. Well, DirecTV has announced it's in talks with Disney to license the rights to offer Disney's broadcast and cable channels at part of an internet-based product. This is basically the same deal that satellite rival Dish Network announced earlier this week. However, because of its size, DirecTV, which has 20.3 million subscribers, is expected to secure better rates on programming than Dish, which only has 14.1 million subscribers. In other cable news, Comcast has completed its purchase of Freewheel, the web video ad serving company, for around $360 million. Freewheel helps companies deliver video ads and works with large media companies like Viacom, Fox, and Comcast, NBC Universal. Sources tell Recode the plan is for Freewheel to run as a standalone company within Comcast. Well, we have a lot of Spotify news today. The music streaming service has acquired music intelligence company, The Echo Nest. That company determines what recommendations to make to listeners for automatic streaming radio services. The Echo Nest API will remain free and open as part of the deal, which allows Spotify competitors, such as RDO, to continue to use its services. Spotify has also launched a new software development kit, or SDK, for developers to look up metadata, pull playlists, search Spotify, and even play audio inside their own third-party apps. All this in addition to Bloomberg reporting that sources say Spotify is speaking with banks about raising a credit facility, which could be the next step towards an eventual initial public offering in the U.S. Well, this earlier 
Earlier this week, we passed along a rumor that Apple's iOS 7.1 was imminent, as it would be required for the iTunes Music Festival app, which goes live next week. However, users in some countries have already been able to download the new app running iOS 7.0.6, which suggests that the South by Southwest streaming does not actually require iOS 7.1 as previously thought. Here's a sure thing, though. HD processing company Pixelworks has revealed in its annual report that Apple accounted for more than 10% of its revenues in all of 2013. Pixelworks stock is up over 80% amidst rumors that this relationship could be related to a future ITV or even a next-gen iPhone display. Well, that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Do join us. Until then, I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.